to Daniel Cormier, who said all week long, Kenny, that not only was Volkan Uzdemir not on his level, but he just said, dude, I'm going to smash this guy. Like, you don't understand, right? I am just going to dispose of Volkan Uzdemir properly, and it's probably not going to take me very long. I thought DC fought a near-perfect fight here, Kenny, and uh, deserved the bonus. Just a, a dominant effort from the soon-to-be 39-year-old UFC light heavyweight champ. Yeah, I thought Daniel... Um Really, uh, in mixing it up with his wrestling, his striking on the inside, I thought he hurt Vulcan a, a few times on the feet there. But it, DC had me scared a little bit in, in the beginning of the first round, just trading. Um, it's exciting to watch, but when you're watching your buddy in there trading with a heavy-handed fighter like a Vulcan, Vulcan Uzdemir, yeah. um, I, I was very nervous uh, for him. Um, once he settled into his feet, once he settled into his rhythm, it was just, it was all Daniel Cormier. Uh, Vulcan just did not have an answer for anything that DC wanted to do in there. Um, heading into the second round, you, it, it seemed like just everyone knew Daniel was going to go out there and get the finish. Um, it was an excellent performance from him. Uh, the, the pressure, the, the, the pacing, uh, DC was ready and he fought like he had a chip on his shoulder as we knew he was out there to, um, establish himself as the champion. I, I think that there was a part of DC where he felt like, you know what? I have the belt, but I don't feel like I'm the champ here. I lost my last right. one. I need to go out there and prove to everybody who Daniel Cormier is. And I, I think he did a great job of doing that. And he did what he was supposed to do as a minus 350 betting favorite. But you're right, Kenny, standing there and trading with someone in Volkan Uzdemir who had dusted two guys in 70 seconds combined coming in uh, is a scary proposition, especially given all that's at stake with yeah. D.C., right? And we're going to soon start talking about a potential super fight between Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic. I mean, there was so much to lose here for D.C., right? He had yeah. his kids in the building watching live for the first time and uh, – I guess he just knew what was going to happen and knew that Volkan Uzdemir was not yet ready nor on his level. And for Henry Hooft, I think this one, Kenny, has to sting, right? 0 for 3 now, at least, uh, in trying to prep guys to beat Daniel Cormier. I also feel like for Daniel, he learned a lot with the second Rumble Johnson training camp. You know, he said before the rematch with John Jones that his training for that Rumble rematch wasn't where it should have been. Um, because he felt like there was a clear path to victory. So you maybe wondered mm -hmm. coming into this fight where there was an even clearer path to victory uh, mm -hmm. than against Rumble, against a guy in Volkan Uzdemir who just was not on the level as we saw this weekend. Um, but Daniel had a great training camp and put himself in position to put forth this type of performance uh, to his right-hand man, Bob Cook and Ro Sanchez and Javier Mendez, you know, they really got one of the greatest of all time here. And, Kenny, we talked a little bit on the broadcast, Fight Pass and other places, about everything that is this guy, Daniel Cormier, one of our dear friends, and what he brings to the table as not just a fighter, but as a color commentator and as a promoter and as a father and as a guy who pays registration fees for wrestling for kids that aren't his and a guy who buys five thousand dollars worth of toys and puts them in a truck because a toy drive hasn't worked out the way it should and he doesn't want that shit publicized you know this is a special special human being future ufc hall of famer and it was nice for me to see our home city kenny embrace him to this extent because I know Cormier at times has liked to be the heel a little bit because yeah. there's a big WWE fan in him and heels move the needle and people buy pay-per-views when heels are on them. Uh, it was nice to see Cormier be the good guy here in a big sports city and, and produce the way he did this weekend. Uh, without a doubt. You know, Daniel Cormier is the guy that uh, you know, every fan should be looking up to, every fighter should be looking up to. This is the guy who, who does it all uh, and does it all very, very well. Um, his responsibilities as a father. This guy's going to every single football game, every single wrestling practice, uh, you know, ballet for his daughter. I mean, he, he's he's such an active dad. Uh, and then you're like, oh, well, this guy's got to train three times a day for a, a championship fight. He, he's the champion of the world in light heavyweight weight class. Um, he's traveling all over the place. He's doing commentary duties. He's doing UFC tonight with me. He has so many balls up in the air. It, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, so for, for Daniel Cormier to succeed at this level in, in, in a variety of things, uh, it is so impressive. And then when you know the guy on a personal level and how yeah. genuine he is, uh, Daniel's one of the greats, period. Then let's talk about all the adversity that he's dealt with in his life and how he's turned that into a positive and how he's become right. such a good human being, how he's a two-time Olympian. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's one of those special, rare individuals. Right. People forget that this is a man who lost a child, an infant, at one point in time, you know. 
Um, so I texted him. I was like, I don't know if at this point, like I get the DC logo tattooed on my body. Like I don't even <laughs> know how to pay the proper respect at this point in time. And some listeners might be thinking, man, this is like a UFC play by play commentator. What, you know, I would have sat here and celebrated Vulcan news to win in a similar way, even if I don't have the personal relationship. Right. But it's just incredible to see DC accomplish everything that he has, Kenny. And and since you guys started working together on UFC tonight, right, to see everything that his professional life has entailed. I mean, you've had a firsthand look at it. So as far as Daniel Cormier now moving forward, three toughest fights in his career, right? Heavyweight Grand Prix, 25 minute war with Josh Barnett, 25 minute loss to John Jones in the first meeting. But the fight that everybody talks about historically for D.C., October 3rd, 2015, UFC 192 against Alexander Gustafson. Toughest fight of D.C.'s career. And that is is the obvious fight on paper that would be next for Daniel Cormier. But lurking, and I brought it up on pay-per-view, is this super fight against the heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. Now, I spoke with D.C. this morning. And anyone who knows him doesn't have to talk to him to know that he doesn't want to step on Cain Velazquez's dick to get into this fight with Stipe. But this is a big fight. This is a fight that is winnable for Daniel Cormier, in my opinion. This is a fight that is appetizing to Cormier if the money is right. And I'm not sure, Kenny, that this is a fight that is any less dangerous or easier than a rematch with Gus. It's an interesting point. Uh, listen, I think uh, Alexander Gustafson, as you said, is the toughest fight in the division for Daniel Cormier right now. Um, I think that's more likely for me. Um, I would not like. I would not like to see that fight against Stipe Miocic. I I don't know at this point with Daniel creeping on thirty, being at thirty nine years old to fight at heavyweight against someone like a Stipe Miocic. I don't know, man. I I mean. This is a heavyweight striker, a, a guy who can do a lot of things. And, you know, can Daniel strike with Stipe? I think, you know, there's aspects of his game where maybe he might have a speed advantage to a certain extent. Is he going to hit as hard as Stipe? Is he going to be able to knock out someone like Stipe? Yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean, if Francis couldn't do it, I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't think so. And I think to eat heavyweight shots from someone like Stipe Miocic. And, and if Daniel's going to switch things up and go to the wrestling, well, Stipe can wrestle as well. Um, is Daniel right. a better wrestler technically? Yes. Uh, does he have better entries? I don't know. Um, so uh, it just concerns me. When I see Daniel plant his feet and do this and, and just kind of try to lean right. back to avoid shots, you, you can't do that against someone like Stipe. He, he can get away with that against maybe Vulcan, um, but... I would not want to see him at this point. Is great. If 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 you're talking about Daniel Cormier at 34, 35, absolutely. Right. Let's see it. Um, at this point, I don't think Daniel needs to do that. I like that you're keeping it real. It sounds to me like you feel like the Gustafson fight is an easier proposition. Yes. For, not for easy, but I, easier. I, yeah. Yeah, and I think the the betting lines would reflect that, Kenny. I guess I just see everything that this weight cut entails, right? For him sure. to have to make 205 pounds again at 39 years old mm -hmm. is no picnic at all. I see the fact that Stipe weighs in at about 246 pounds, and I think DC would probably be in that range as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I, I just feel like certainly from a financial standpoint, DC it's a huge fight. Would, would want that. And I think to, to stamp his legacy with a chance to become a two-division champion um, – but he was a little bit vague with me as to which fight was more difficult, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I just think it's interesting. I do think that Dana White is interested, and I do think that Dana is going to move to make that fight potentially. Wow. What's a bigger pay-per-view fight for us, Kenny? Is it Stipe Cain Velazquez or Stipe Daniel Cormier? You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. I don't know what the internal metrics would say about a returning Cain Velazquez against Daniel Cormier who has been the far more active party and a guy who's been all over TV for the last five years. Yeah, and listen, as much as Cain Velasquez de deserves that shot, I'm a huge Cain Velasquez fan, have been for a very long time. Um, I, I, I think that um, I don't know if the, if the promotion can rely on Cain to show up on Fight Night at this point just based on right. everything he's been dealing with. I hope that is not the case, but... It, it becomes hard for it. It becomes very difficult for a business to to say, "Oh, here's a guy who's been injured for all these years. Let's book a date with him." You know, it it it, it really is. Um, 
a, a tough thing. And, and Daniel Cormier has been one of those guys, even with his injuries, that you know, for the most part, he's going to show up on fight night. He's a guy you can rely on. Right. So um, tough decision there for, for both Daniel and, and the UFC. And then just sort of putting a bow on the two title fights, big picture, p- big picture, you saw two contenders, challengers that, at least in my opinion, just appeared not to be ready for prime time. We talked about Francis Ngannou and where he may go from here. Mm-hmm. Still going to be a big fight next. Still going to be a top six guy for Francis, and that's very exciting. But for Volkan Uzdemir, right, um, the blueprint, I think, is there right now. This is a young fighter, at least in terms of his MMA miles, but a lot of work to do for Volkan, I would think, as he tries to to get himself back to where he got here very quickly in the UFC. Yeah, absolutely. And these are kind of the fights that, you know, when you face that high-level opponent, when you face the champion, um, you, you go back and go, okay, wow, I, I got a, I got a lot of work to do. I got to get my wrestling in order. I got to get my jiu-jitsu uh, better. I got to get my get-ups uh, much sharper. Um, I got to be smarter when I'm on my feet. I got to move more. So they're going to look back at that tape, and, and both Francis and Vulcan uh, will improve from this fight. I, I think there's nothing more motivating uh, and revealing than a loss. Um, and with both yeah. these guys, just the way that they handle a- adversity and, and how calm and composed they are typically uh, in a fight, they showed a lot of toughness. I think there's some positive you can take from that fight as well uh, to keep them motivated, to keep them pressing forward. Um, and uh, still young in, in, in their careers, both of them. So um, a, a lot a lot of positives from this fight. 